What's up guys? Welcome to another YouTube video. Today I want to touch on something that's a little bit controversial and totally misunderstood. I'm talking about this guy here, using flash for bird photography. I'm saying misunderstood because most people assume you're in some dark area and blasting the flash onto the bird using it as the main light, but that's simply not true. When I talk about using flash for bird photography, I talk about using a little bit of fill flash in certain situations to add a little bit of extra light and spark to my images. So let me show you how I use it, how you can use it properly, how you find the right settings and why it's beneficial to use. And I will also show you the three scenarios that I use fill flash in. Before we go into the conditions when I use flash, I first should say that I don't really enjoy using flash. There's a lot of limitations when it comes to using flash because firstly, the flash will not fire at the same frame rate as your camera shoots. So the most you get is probably three to five images flashed if you're shooting in high speed mode. And that's a severe limitation. So there will be frames that are flashed, there will be frames that are not flashed. There's some things we can add to the flash like a battery pack that helps, but there's still limitations. And it's just annoying, it's just another thing to use. However, I think the advantages outweigh the difficulties, so that's why I like using it. And often, if I can, I don't use it. I always have it on my camera, but most of the time it's turned off. If it's nice and sunny outside or nice and bright, I wouldn't use the flash at all, there's no benefit. But let's talk about the scenarios where using the flash gives me a real advantage. First of all, nice overcast day like today. You can shoot without the flash, but you will get darker bellies, the colors will look flat. If you use the flash, you're adding a little bit of light, a little bit of spark to your image and get more saturation in the colors, giving you much better results and much easier to edit images. Secondly, probably my favorite shooting scenario is when the bird is in a darker area and behind the bird is a brighter, lighter background. Without the flash, it's basically impossible to deal with because you have to overexpose to get the bird properly exposed, but then you're blowing out the background. If you're exposing for the background, you're ending up with a dark bird. So this is where the flash comes in. I can use the flash to light the bird and underexpose a little bit so I maintain the nice color and details in the background, giving me a great looking image. And lastly, what I don't use very often, you can use the flash in bright daylight to soften the shadows. So what are the things we need to take full advantage of the flash? We need a flash bracket that sets the flash up higher above the lens. Because if you put the flash into the hot shoe, you will get steel eyes in the birds and we don't want that. So increasing the height of the flash gets rid of that problem. Secondly, what I like to use, I like to use a battery pack that helps me to recycle the flash faster and getting more frames per second. Thirdly, what I like to use is some sort of flash extender, a better beamer in this case, that funnels the flash and gives me greater reach. And that's pretty much it. Of course, we also need the cords, but these three things help you to set the flash above the camera and get the most out of it, get the fastest frame rate possible. And also when it comes to the flash itself, having the top of the line models would help you to get faster recycling times because they have better cooling than smaller flashes or the cheaper flashes you can get on eBay, for instance. Something very important when you use fill flash is that you put your flash into high speed mode. How you get this different from flash to flash, so check your manual. But if you don't put your flash into high speed mode, it will only allow your shutter speed up to the maximum sync time of your camera, usually a 200th of a second. But obviously that's not enough for bird photography. So we need to use the flash in high speed mode to allow us to have faster shutter speed and to just add a little bit of fill flash to the images. A lot of times people say, oh, I started using the flash, but all my images are just white. That's because your camera limits your shutter speed to 200th of a second if you're not using the flash in high speed mode. Also another advantage of using a better beamer or flash extender like this is that I can use much lower flash powers on my flash because this extender funnels the light and gives me a greater reach. So I can use a very low power on the flash helping me to recycle it faster. One more important thing to consider when using flash extenders like this one. They can be out of place sometimes. They can be twisted too high up, too far down, and then they funnel the light, not actually to the point where your lens is pointing it. So how can we counter that? I take a test shot. I'll adjust it to the point where I think it's right, 
put it to full power, point it near a tree that's close to me, make sure I point it at a little branch for instance making sure this is where the flash should hit, take a shot and it's there. Let me show you if it's not right, it will look like this or if it's too far down it will look like that. So that's important, making sure that your flash hits the bird, otherwise again waste of time using it. Secondly, you saw me adjusting the flash up here. You can actually, at least on this Canon camera, adjust it in your settings as well, the flash power. If I go to the menu, the very first point is something called external speed light control. And in there I can adjust all the settings of the flash without actually touching the flash. Pretty cool, hey? So how do we actually find the right flash settings? I know that's a big uh, mystery for everyone, but it's actually quite easy. And when you watch my exposure video, my manual mode video, you already know that I'm a fan of full control. So again, I will be setting up my flash in manual mode and not ETTL mode. What happens in ETTL mode? Again, the camera takes over its meters and it might give you too much flash, not enough flash, and there just be a bit of a variance between a row of images. How do we do it? We don't have a histogram for the manual mode like when we select the exposure. So we have to rely on the back of the camera. And again, it's all about test shots. We just take a couple test shots, make sure our histogram is spot on. Then we turn on the flash, take a test shot with the flash. Usually I like to start at about 1 16th power and see what that looks like. If the image looks flashed, like too much flash with a bit of a dark background, your power will be too high. You have to use a lower power, like 1 32nd, 1 64 power. If it feels like you don't see any impact of the flash at all, you need to use more flash. So let me show you how I do that in this scenario with Charlie over there. Just took a test shot, looked at my histogram, F8, ISO 800, 1 640th of a second gives me a really nice histogram, nice image, but it looks slightly unbalanced. And this is where the flash comes in. What we want to use the flash for is to balance our image to give us the benefits of the flash without showing that we use flash. We don't want to have a flash look. We just want to get the benefits of the fill flash, like more colors, lighter, brighter bellies. But we don't want to show other people in the images that we actually use flash. So let me do that. We start with 1 16th power. Take a test shot. In this case, that actually looks really nice. So I wouldn't have to do anything anymore. Perfect test shot. We can start shooting. Let me show you what it looks like if we use too much flash. Let's go to half power. Same settings. Now we get a dark background and a too bright bird because we use too much flash. That's the look we really, really want to avoid. We don't want that ugly flash look. What happens if we don't use enough flash? Basically nothing. You're just wasting time, wasting flash, wasting your energy using the flash because the flash has no impact. What's the point? So it's key to find a setting that allows us to lighten up the belly of the bird, eliminate shadows, add nice color to the image without having too much flash. So now we know how to find our flash exposure. It's simple. We found our manual base exposure by looking at the histogram, as you can see in my manual exposure video. Then we turn on the flash, start with 1 16th power, see where that gets us. We use the screen in the back to see if it's too flashed where the bird's too bright, the background dark, or not flashed at all, there's basically no difference between the non-flash shot and the flash shot. So if it's too much flash, we lower it, to little flash, we increase the flash power until we find a perfect balance where we have the advantages of the flash illuminating our shot without showing that we use the flash. Here's another example of an image where flash saved the day. It's photographing yellow spotted honey eaters in a fairly dark setting with a bright green background. Without the flash, the bird is just way too dark. If we try to expose for the bird, we're blowing out the background completely and the bird is actually still too dark. I turned on my flash, exposed for the background and added the light that I needed with my flash onto the bird, giving me a fantastic and nice looking balanced image. Now you might wonder up to what distance the flash works effectively. I'd say at least 20 meters, which is about 65 feet. And what's important to keep in mind is the further away your subject, the more power you need to dial in on the flash. And opposite to that, the closer the bird is to you, the less power you want to use. Sometimes if it's a bit darker, for instance, in a rainforest and the bird is quite close, I might even take my flash extender off 
because even on the lower setting with the flash extender the flash is still too strong so always just take a couple test shots make sure your flash is not too strong and yeah if you use an extender you can use it for at least up to 20 meters at a bit higher power setting and still get good results personally i shoot a lot of small birds so i usually shoot at a distance of 10 to 12 meters which is about i don't know 40 feet or something and for that i usually use the better beamer on a not too high setting and it gives me great results. I'll put two links to my website and to my blog into the description where I have two articles that also show you in detail again what settings I use, how I set up fill flash and the equipment that I use that might be helpful for you so check it out down there in the description. If you always thought about using flash this might be your moment to go out there get one and just have a play around with it find your footing and then get some better images. And if you're totally against flash, then just don't use it. That's fine as well. I really hope I could give you an insight into the world of field flash photography and show you why I use it, show you where the limitations are, but also show you the cases where it's really helpful to have it. As I said, in an ideal world, I wouldn't want to use the flash at all. If it's a sunny day, nice low light, I don't even take it out. But other times, like when it's overcast or you have a bright background and a darker bird that, or bird that's in the shade, it really helps me to take fantastic images in scenarios where other people can't take pictures at all and I still get some really nice images. And I also love the aspect that with the flash I can just shape the look of my images and get a really nice effect. So that's why I like using it. I know it's a controversial topic. There will be a lot of people that don't like using it or that overuse it. I think the key is balance here. And trust me, if the flash was scaring away all the birds, I wouldn't use it. But it doesn't. Most birds don't care at all. I just want to find the right balance where I use it in the cases where I need it. So let me know in the comments, have you used flash? Are you going to use it now? Are you against the use of flash? Why are you against the use of flash? Let me know, give me a thumbs up for this video and I will see you in the next one. And also, subscribe to my channel.